today we will discuss the PowerPoint presentation on surface hardening process. Myself, Indran Mondal, Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department. First of all, many engineering must be very hard to resist surface indentation or wear and yet process adequate toughness to resist impact damage. And surface hardening uh, that is a process by which a steel is given a hard wear resistant surface while retaining a ductile but tougher interior. Surface hardening is usually done for the following reasons for improvement of wear resistance, to improve resistance to high contact stresses, for the improvement of fracture stubbornness, and also for the improvement of fatigue resistance, and sometimes to improve corrosion resistance. What are the main components that are usually required for surface hardening are gears, bearings, valves, cams, hand tools, rows shafts, machine tools, bearing races, and etc. And you can classify the surface hardening techniques into two major categories. First, first of all, thermochemical process and second one is surface hardening or local thermal surface hardening. This is the cross section of a case hardened gear teeth. This is the main surfaces. This contains pandite and cementite. And the main characteristics are high this high hardness, highly wear resistant, and core contents ferrite, low hardness, ductile, capable of withstanding high stress. This is the classification of surface hardening concept. This is classified as two types. First type is thermal treatments, and second one is thermochemical treatments. Under thermal treatments, there are four subcategories. First one is induction hardening, second one flame hardening, third one laser beam hardening, and fourth one is electron beam hardening. And under thermochemical treatments, there are five subtypes. First one is nitriding, and under this, there are another two types gas nitriding and liquid nitriding. Carburizing, there are four subtypes of carburizing. First one is solid or pack carburizing gas carburizing, liquid carburizing and third one is carbonitriding, chroming and boronizing. Let us discuss one by one. First, induction hardening process. In this case, heating steel or cast iron by means of high frequency electric current is induction hardening and the main principle of induction is that when a component is placed in a varying magnetic field, an eddy current is induced in it. This eddy current produced is used to heat the component. The component heated by induction is then quenched. Okay. Next, a thin hardened layer is formed on the surface of hardenable steel or cast iron that is induction hardened. The time taken to heat the component by induction is very short. It generally ranges from 2 to 5 minutes. Within this short time period, the surface layer reaches the upper critical temperature. When the condensity is more, the induced eddy current is unevenly distributed with the distance from the surface. The, this phenomena is termed as electromagnetic surface effect or skin effect. The higher the frequency of varying magnetic field, the more unevenly will, will be the distribution of eddy current in the cross section of the object being heated. The skin layer through which the induced current is inversely proportional to the square root of induced current frequency. Controlling the frequency of supply voltage can control the depth of hardening or hardened skin layer. The frequency usually ranges from 1000 Hz to 1 lakh Hz and the depth of hardness ranges from 0.5 to 6 mm. After the component reaches the upper critical temperature, that is it reaches the austenite temperature, it is quenched by spraying water since the heating rate is very rapid and the heating time is also very less. The austenitic grain size is very fine. And the structure obtained after quenching has a very fine martensite structure with the same austenitic grain size. 
after quenching the component is tempered at low temperature in the range of 150 degrees celsius to 200 degrees celsius in order to relieve any stress caused by induction hardening due to rapid heating and cooling of the surface and if a harder core is required then the component should be suitably heat treated before induction hardening in order to obtain the desired properties in the core okay and maximum 6 mm depth can be achieved in about 6 second time and still with carbon percentage ranging from 0.4 to 0.5 percentage are suitable for induction hardening and the hardening temperature for plain carbon steel is about 760 degrees celsius and for alloy steels higher hardening temperatures are required so this process may harden components such as pulleys camshaft gears boring bars crank pins axles and brake drums these are the main examples of applications so this is all about induction hardening next is flame hardening this is another surface hardening process okay so this method in this method a highly intensity oxyacetylene flame flame is applied to the selective region the temperature is raised enough to be in the region of austenite transformation the right temperature is determined by the operator based on experience by watching the color of the steel so this method involves rapidly heating the surface of the steel or cast iron to a temperature above its upper critical temperature by using an oxyacetylene flame torch followed by water spray quenching or by immersing the component into a quenching medium in order to transform austenite to martensite steel used in flame hardening may be hardenable that is it should have sufficient carbon percentage suitable alloying elements also it is important that in this process there is no alteration in the chemical composition that is there is no inward diffusion of carbon or nitrogen in order to increase the surface hardness of steel okay and uh, there are three methods of flame hardening such as uh, spot method spinning method and you can also call as programming method there are three these are the three methods of flame hardening Pro what are the three methods of flame hardening such as spot method spinning method and progressive method okay so in spot hardening a particular region or spot on the component is heated by the one or more flames and is quenched it consists of locally heating selected areas with a suitable flame head and subsequently quenching the heating head may be of either single orifice or multi orifice design depending on the extent of the area to be hardened the spinning method is applied to round or semi round parts such as wheels cams or gears in its simplest form the method uses a mechanisms for rotating or spinning the workpiece in either horizontal or a vertical plane while the surface is being heated by the flame head okay one or more water cooled heating heads equal in width to the surface to be heated are employed and last method that is none other than in progressive method the heating and quenching devices are fitted in single equipment which is moved over the surface of the component which is quenched by water spray or quenched in a water bath it is used to harden large areas that are beyond the scope of the spot method the size and the shape of the workpiece as well as the volume of oxygen and the fuel gas is required to heat the specified area and that is the main factors of selection of this method okay so maximum 6 mm depth can be achieved and the heater region is quenched to achieve the desired hardness okay and uh, in case of flame hardening large parts which would not be normally fit in a furnace can be heated using this method an example of application i have told you earlier in case of lathe bed hardening large ears teeth hardening large sprockets teeth hardening etc